Hello, and thank you for joining. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data solutions and services. Today we're going to get into the topic of data science, and we're going to run a business analysis called a churn analysis. And the purpose of this particular presentation is to just kind of walk you through the thought process a data scientist would have as they're working through uh, an advanced analytics problem. So what we'll do is we'll go through some of the major considerations, we'll build some models, and at the end we'll show you how to deploy it. The very first thing that we do is that we create a script in R. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of all of the techniques, but basically one of the key tenets is that you bring in the data and you load certain apps. So depending on the particular uh, analytical task that you're faced with, you load the appropriate app. So in this case, we're going to be um, looking at a churn analysis. And so I'm bringing in some libraries for that. So the first thing after we've done that is we bring in some data. And we can see in this case, just by looking at the data set, that we have a bunch of information. And then on the right hand side, we have some knowledge of whether or not somebody had left the company or not. So churn is basically describes the behavior of customers leaving your organization. So now that I have that, there's some typical techniques that data scientists will use where they convert certain variables, they might change the shape, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just executing these pieces. Now, of course, you know, you might remove certain variables, add new variables, and this typically can be a very lengthy process. And finally, if you're missing any type of variables, you might clean out those variables. But as you can see, it was very simple. I just spent a couple moments and I basically just cleaned up my data set. Now, of course, at this point, you can create certain types of visualizations. You can, you can create correlation matrices. You can plot the results. All this kind of helps in understanding the data. But, uh, but let's go ahead and now kind of focus our attention in actual model building. You can think of data in the sense as a finite resource. So what I want to do is I want to save some of my data so I can test my algorithms on it later. And for now, I want to build it uh, on a certain set of training data. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating a 70-30% split. So I'm saving some data. I'm going to 30% of the data, and I'm going to train on 70%. Well, a lot of people know of creating regression models and logistic regression models. So I'm going to run one of these models right now. And from this model, I'm actually going to reduce it um, to a smaller set of variables that uh, essentially give me predictive performance. Well, when I do this, I can, of course, run diagnostics, you know, find out which ones you know, are creating outliers. And I can create performance measurements. Uh, one interesting performance measurement of a logistic regression is what's called the odds ratio. And what the odds ratio essentially is saying is what are the odds of an event happening? So if you look on the bottom left hand side where we have this total international charge, what this is telling me is that for each unit increase in an international charge there is a 30% increase in the likelihood of a person leaving the organization, or churning in this sense. So we can see that a logistic regression really is providing a lot of insight in terms of the business. You know, maybe the international charges are too high for your business. Likewise, I can run a couple more advanced algorithms. Okay, so in this case, I'm creating what's called a support vector machine. You don't need to understand the specifics of it at this time, but just understand that it also creates predictions. Finally, I'm going to create one last model, which is an incredibly powerful tool in a data scientist's toolkit. And it's called a random forest model. So basically, it takes decision trees and averages them. So it runs 500 different decision trees and then creates a pooled performance of the algorithms. What's very interesting about these is they have what's called a variable importance plot. So if on the right hand side, if I'm looking at the items to the right of that blue line, which are the number of customer service calls, international plan, and total international calls, that 
is telling me that these are most important factors for determining customer churn, which to me makes a lot of sense. The number of customer service calls that you have, as it increases, you're getting more frustrated, and as a consumer, as you get more frustrated, you're more prone to leaving. So this passes the smell test. And there's a couple different variants that you can look at this. Um, so here's another way of looking at it, and we can see that the total charges that you have for daytime minutes and number of customer service calls are important factors for churn. So customers might perceive the services to be priced too high and the minute plans that they're offering from this particular cell phone provider might not be right for the consumer. And finally, I'm just going to show one other uh, advanced algorithm that can be employed through the open source R framework, uh, which essentially allows us to create a set of decision rules. And with these decision rules, they have incredible power in terms of providing insight. And what it does is it creates a series of rules. And if you look at, um, let's say, rule number 10 as an example, if you are using more than 245 minutes during the day and more than 200 minutes at night, there's a good chance you're leaving the company. So this is another technique that can be used to derive business insight. So now that we've created all these different models, what we're going to do is we're going to just measure the performance. We have to know which one of these models is better than the other, and to do so, I'm just going to just run a series of code. Okay, so there it's done, and now I'm going to graph the results. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the line that essentially hugs at the outer perimeter. So we don't want the line on the dotted red dash line. We want the line on the perimeter. And in this case, we see that the random forest model is the most appropriate algorithm for this particular task. Specifically, we can figure out its performance by calculating what's known as the area under the curve. And this is just a measure of accuracy. And in this case, the random forest is 94% accurate based off of the area under the curve. So finally, so we've gone through an example where we trained models on a certain set of information, we tested the algorithm, we derived some insights from it. Now I want to talk a little bit about deployment in a production system, and specifically in a big data environment. So I'm going to save my model as such, and now I have this script saved that can be then used later. Now that we have this model saved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it and I'm going to show how it would be integrated in the full big data stack. So in this case, let's just take a look at this production level churn model. And it's a very simple model. It's basically you bring in the type of data that you want to work with. Okay, so in this case I have a new record of data. There might be some uh, calibration that would be done by a data science. We simply load the model. In this case, this is our final random forest churn model. And then we score the new data based off of this model. There might be you know, some rounding or some smoothing out for the data. And then we write the results back to our database. And at this point, we would move the information into a data warehouse, um, an EDH, or dashboarding capabilities. But I think what's important, and what you take out of this entire discussion, is how easy the data science components are and how it can be built in parallel to incorporate in your big data framework. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are Metascale, the premier provider of big data services and solutions. We want to be your one-stop big data helpline. If you're interested in our products and services, please feel free to check us out at www.metascale.com or contact us through the telephone number or email address listed below. Thank you very much and have a nice day.